In metal forming operations, the part is shaped by tooling impacting on the metal stock, often achieving the final shape with little or no scrap. Sheet metal stamping transforms metal into functional products by applying the force of a moving ram to tooling located within the stamping press. Stamping's primary advantage is the ability to transform two-dimensional sheet metal stock into three-dimensional finished components at a relatively high rate of speed with minimum operator intervention. Sheet metal stampings range from simple stamped parts to complex curved shapes. Common examples of stamped sheet metal parts are found in automobile manufacturing. The stamping press transforms steel into numerous frame and body components. Various products in other industries are also fabricated largely from stamped sheet metal components. It is essential to understand that the stamping press simply provides the force for the stamping operation. The finished stamping is determined by tooling within the die, which is located within the press. Presses use either mechanical or hydraulic power to force the tooling together and form the part. Mechanical sheet metal stamping presses vary widely in size. Benchtop presses are among the smallest and are rated as low as 5 tons capacity. Extremely large multiple or tandem press lines rated in thousands of tons are used for stamping very large complicated workpieces. Press stroke speeds can vary from 8 or 10 strokes per minute to operating speeds of up to 1800 strokes per minute. Both mechanical and hydraulic presses are commonly classified by the design of the frame that supports the moving elements of the press. The two predominant press configurations are the gap frame, sometimes called the C-frame, and the straight side press. The principal feature of the gap frame configuration is its C-shaped throat opening. Advantages of the gap frame press are ease of access to three sides of the die area as well as the need for less floor space than the straight side press. In press force capacities ranging from 35 to 60 tons, gap frame presses may cost approximately half as much as straight side presses. The main disadvantage of the gap frame press is an unavoidable angular misalignment that occurs during stamping operations. This deflection of the C frame can only be limited by very robust frame construction which adds to the weight and cost of the machine. In many applications, however, this misalignment is not a problem. The frame of the open back inclinable or OBI style of gap frame press pivots at the base. This feature aids in finished part or scrap discharge. Generally, however, the open back stationary or OBS style of gap frame press is used more often with parts removed from the die by timed blasts of air, automatic unloading devices, or conveyors. Straight side presses derive their name from the vertical columns or uprights located on either side of the machine. The housing or frame of most straight side presses is held together in compression by pre-stressed tie rods, although some straight side presses have solid frames. Angular deflection during stamping is not an issue with straight side presses. For that reason, dimensional accuracy of stamped parts and the need for die maintenance often improve with the selection of a straight side press. The main structural components of a straight side press include the crown, the columns, bed, and bolster. The crown serves many functions depending upon the design of the machine. Typically, the motor, flywheel, clutch, and brake mount on the crown. The crankshaft end bearings may also be located in the crown or, in some cases, in the columns. The columns support the crown and have attached adjustable guides called gibs that guide the slide. The gibs ensure proper parallelism, squareness, and sliding fit between press components. The bed is the base of the machine. It must rest on a solid, level foundation to ensure proper machine functioning. The bolster adds stiffness to the press bed and assists in spreading the load evenly over the bed's structural members. 
the bolster has T-slots, or tapped holes, to permit secure fastening of the die. In a mechanical press, an electric motor supplies the energy needed to stamp parts. There are a number of moving parts that store, control, and transmit that energy to the die and workpiece. These parts include the flywheel, gears, clutch, crankshaft, pitman, connection, slide or ram, counterbalance, and brake. The flywheel stores the energy supplied by the motor. The gears reduce the speed and increase the torque delivered by the flywheel through the clutch. This is known as gear reduction. The clutch controls the coupling and transmission of the flywheel's energy to the crankshaft, or eccentric drive on eccentric style presses. The pitman transmits the motion of the crankshaft to the slide by means of a bearing known as the connection. On eccentric presses, the eccentric strap transmits the motion. The slide, or ram, is what the upper die is fastened to. The counterbalance offsets the weight of the slide, upper die, and attached linkage during press operation. The brake stops the press and holds the slide and attached mechanisms in place. Various press parts such as the pitman, connection, and bolster have similar functions in both straight side and gap frame presses. Several drive arrangements are used on mechanical presses to transform the rotary motion of the drive motor through the crankshaft to the reciprocating motion of the slide. These arrangements include direct drive, single gear reduction, and double gear reduction presses. In non-geared or direct drive presses, the flywheel is mounted to the end of the crankshaft and driven by belts from the motor. Higher operating speeds are possible with this arrangement than with geared type drives. Other advantages of this simple design include fewer moving parts to wear out and less frictional loss of mechanical energy. Certain factors limit application of the direct drive, however. The full rated force of the machine is only available very close to the bottom of the stroke and the ability to deliver rated forces is substantially reduced if the press operates at less than full speed. In single gear reduction presses, the flywheel is mounted on the back shaft and power is transmitted through a pinion to a main gear mounted on the crankshaft. A problem occurs with single end drive presses, however. Angular misalignment, proportional to the torque transmitted through a crankshaft with two throws, causes the side of the ram nearest the driven end of the crankshaft to reach bottom dead center before the other side. This results in a ram tipping alignment error. Angular misalignment of the crankshaft is avoided when the crankshaft is driven equally on both ends. This provides more accurate alignment under load than with single end drive systems. Additionally, this angular misalignment is not an issue on eccentric gear presses in which an eccentric is fastened to the main gears, thereby eliminating the use of a crankshaft altogether. Double gear reduction presses have two gear reductions from the flywheel to the crankshaft. These machines normally achieve a speed range from 8 to 20 strokes per minute and are used for difficult applications such as heavy deep drawing, cold forging, and flanging of large parts. Clutches and brakes are vital elements of a press. Virtually all mechanical presses transmit the energy stored in the flywheel to the slide by means of a clutch mechanism. Otherwise, the slide would cycle continuously whenever power was applied to the flywheel. When the clutch is not engaged, the slide is stopped and maintained in a stationary position by a brake. Many older presses use a mechanical full revolution clutch, which when activated, cannot be disengaged until the crankshaft makes one complete revolution. Most modern presses are equipped with an air friction clutch and brake arrangement, commonly called a partial revolution clutch, which can be disengaged at any point in the stroke before the crankshaft has completed a full revolution. The air friction clutch permits rapid, dependable stopping and engagement in mid-stroke. 
The force capacity of a mechanical press is the maximum force that can be exerted at a specified distance above the bottom of the stroke by the dies against a workpiece. It is expressed in tons or kilonewtons and is often the major consideration in the selection of a press. Other criteria that determine force capacity of a press are flywheel energy and torque capacity. The flywheel receives and stores energy from the motor until a certain amount is removed by each working stroke of the press. Once the flywheel is up to speed and the press is not being cycled, the motor need only supply enough energy to make up for frictional losses until the next stroke. Torque capacity is the ability to transmit the energy of the flywheel through the gears, clutch, crankshaft, connection and slide into the die without exceeding the safe working capacity of any component. Geared presses allow the flywheel to be rotated faster while the slide speed is reduced. Gearing does not increase force or energy capacity. The gear ratio is primarily a means for obtaining an efficient flywheel speed. The definition of high-speed mechanical press operation in terms of strokes per minute is not universally agreed upon. As a general rule, high-speed operation involves press speeds of 300 strokes per minute or greater. The press speed for small high-volume parts can exceed 2,000 strokes per minute. However, such presses generally operate at 1,000 to 1,400 strokes per minute for improved die life and performance, more consistent workpiece quality, and easier material handling. Machine size and part configurations are factors affecting press speeds, as are inertia and vibration of moving parts of the press. Common factors in presses designed for high-speed operation include compact, robust construction, with special attention given to close fit and lubrication of bearing surfaces. Excellent alignment of both the press and the die is critical, with the press and die considered as a single system. Hydraulic presses are the alternative to mechanically driven presses. These presses use one or more cylinders and pressurized fluid to provide the required motion and force to form or blank workpieces. While mechanical presses are still the predominant type, hydraulic presses are becoming increasingly more popular. There are metal stamping applications where hydraulic presses offer certain advantages and in some cases are the only machines that can be used. One of the major benefits is that the full force of the hydraulic press can be delivered at any point in the stroke, not just at the bottom of the stroke as with a mechanical press. Deep drawing and forming applications often require large forces very high in the stroke. Few mechanical presses have tonnage capability to permit such applications. The stroke of a hydraulic press can also be adjusted to provide optimal part clearance before cycling again. Moreover, because the desired preset hydraulic pressure provides a fixed working force, it is well suited for different tool heights and various material thicknesses. Hydraulic presses are more compact than mechanical presses of comparable capacity and have fewer moving parts and are ideally suited for many applications such as non-automated operations and small lot sizes. Proper selection of a press is essential for successful and economical operation. It is important to note, however, that no general purpose press exists that can provide maximum productivity for all applications. Compromises must be made if a press is to be used for more than one job. Factors that must be considered during press selection include size, force, energy, and speed requirements. The press must be capable of exerting force in the amount, location, and direction, as well as for the length of time needed to perform the specified operations. Other press selection considerations must include the size and geometry of the workpieces, operations to be performed, number of workpieces to be made, production rate needed, workpiece accuracy, finish requirements, and equipment costs. Press controls involve electrical, 
electromechanical, pneumatic, hydraulic, electronic, and other equipment used to control the operation of presses. Complexity of controls ranges from a simple starter and disconnect switch to a sophisticated multimotor, multifunction control incorporating a variety of sensors, control systems, and devices. In addition to controlling the motion of a press's moving elements, a control system should allow a stamping operation to yield consistent, predictably high production rates without jeopardizing the safety of operating personnel, the press, or dies. Systems for controlling mechanical power presses are mostly electromechanical or solid state. However, computer numerical control or CNC systems and programmable logic controllers or PLCs are also being used, especially on more complex, highly automated systems. Self-checking and diagnostic features with fast response to sensors are becoming increasingly important in automated stamping operations. No matter what type of press is used, sheet metal stamping cannot begin until stock is fed into the die. A wide variety of equipment is available to transfer sheet metal material to, from, or between presses. The feeding of blanks, or previously formed stampings to presses, is accomplished in several ways. One of the most common is manual feeding, which is generally limited to low volume production. Manual feeding requires the use of point of operation guarding or hand feeding tools to keep operators' hands and fingers out.